Welcome or welcome back. This is Lost in Thought. My name is Jen and today we're talking about the Erhurt latrine disaster. Now this is probably one of the most gruesome ways I've ever heard of dying in the medieval period and if you're really really squeamish this probably isn't for you at all so I won't be offended if you don't want to listen to this. So this all begins well before 1184 when two nobles of Germany or the Holy Roman Empire, Louis III of Thuringia and the Archbishop Conrad of Mainz are having a land argument. Now it is believed that Louis III, he's built a castle really, really closely to the border of his land and the Archbishop's land, which the Archbishop is not happy with at all in the slightest. He sees it as a slight. He sees it as, a, as not quite as an attack on him, but a form of an aggression. And so these two nobles, they're squabbling. And in order so that it doesn't get to a point of civil war or outright war, then King Henry VI gets involved. Now, oh, King Henry VI at the moment, he is king of Germany, but in the future he will become the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. And so what he does is he gathers these nobles together and he invites other nobles as well into what's called a Hoftag. And this is an informal assembly. It's a, it's a gathering of nobles and they're going to sit down, they're having a talk and they're going to discuss this land that who's going to own which part and hopefully they'll be able to sort it out without any bloodshed. You've got to remember this is very very turbulent times. There's uh, we're in the middle of crusades, Germany is invading Poland um, and as such we want now less bloodshed. Well Henry wants less bloodshed and so the blessed place that he thinks to do this is in a place called Erfurt and Erfurt is pretty central in Germany it's still there today and he gathers Louis, Conrad and a few other nobles and they meet in a monastery called St Peter's. Um, this monastery is still here today uh, you can still visit it it's I believe it's now more like a museum and nobles being nobles it's not just themselves it's themselves and they all have an entourage because what's the point of being a noble if you don't have an entire entourage with you as well and these nobles they go upstairs into this monastery and whilst they're upstairs you have to understand the the floorboards they would be stone walls on the sides and wooden planks almost, wooden floorboards going across. Now, back in those days, back in 1184, there's no building regulations like there is today. And this building isn't designed for all these nobles, all these entourage, all these people to be stood on the first floor. And it might have been allowed in there. People might have been heated up in the moment. But nobody heard the floor creaking. It was starting to give way. And eventually, that's what happened. The floor of this building, this upper floor, it suddenly gave way. All these nobles fell through the floor, onto the floor below, which then collapsed again straight down into the cellar but this wasn't a normal cellar this was where the waste from the latrines went now the lucky ones they died on impact the less lucky ones they either drowned in liquid excrement or as they were trying to get their breath as they were trying to breathe excrement gives off carbon dioxide, it gives off methane, there's no oxygen and they're asphyxiated in that waste. It's estimated that between 60 to 100 people died at Erfurt that day. Now, what happened to our three main players? Well, 
King Henry VI, he survives. He was actually sat in a stone alcove. And when the floor collapsed, he was still there. And with the help of uh, a few ladders, once the dust settles, he manages to get off. He leaves Erfurt straight away. And he goes on to become a uh, Holy Roman Emperor. Uh, Archbishop Conrad Mainz, he apparently is holding on. He's at the side of the building. He's holding on to some stained glass window bars and he manages to escape as well. Louis III, he is unfortunate. He's one of the unfortunate souls that falls through down to the bottom, but he manages to survive. He manages to get out. He dies a few years later, though, however, whilst he's on campaign, whilst he's going crusading. He gets uh, sick, he gets poorly on a boat and, and he passes away. Like I said, it's estimated between 60 and 100. Unfortunately, we don't have the exact number. But what happens next? I mean, all these nobles have suddenly died. Has this left a big hole in Germany? Well, not really, because people then, those nobles, they always had an understudy, they almost, they had somebody underneath them, either their sons that would be ready then to take their place when they died. It was expected that those nobles would die suddenly, perhaps one day, maybe in war or from sickness, from illness. So it wasn't like Germany was suddenly thrown into turmoil. However, I do find it a very interesting, if gruesome story of how a few nobles one day in Germany in the medieval period died. If you've enjoyed this video, thank you ever so much for joining me. Um, please like, comment, share and subscribe. And I hope to see you soon with another video. Thank you ever so much. Goodbye for now.